This is a quiz. Either you're excited or scared shitless. There's no in-between. Actually, there is an in-between of just not giving a fuck because there is nothing at stake here. And that's very valid. If this is for some reason the first video that you're seeing in mind, maybe on the recommended page, this is probably not the best way to be introduced to me. So just in case, hi. I'm Lindsay. I make videos about the weird side of animals and evolution because that's what I went to school for. Well, I went to school for all sides, but uh, you seem to like the weird side. And this is a quiz just for fun. We're having a fun time here. Approximately every 10 videos, I do a unit quiz where I have you test your knowledge on the last 10 videos. Today's unit quiz covers everything posted since the last quiz in January. Okay, so here's how we're going to do this. Like last time, we're doing a multiple choice quiz. I've upped it from 22 questions to 30 this time. I'll put the question and the possible answers on the board. Once I finish reading it, I'm going to give you five seconds to choose your answer. So pause the video if you need more time. And then I'll give you the answer once the time is up. I'm not going to save everything to the end because that's bullshit. I'm going to give it to you straight. I would love if you decide to keep track of your score so you can tell me what you got at the end in the comments. All right, let's just get right into it. Question one. What animals are known for living inside of the carcasses of their former prey? A. Saps. B. Palella. C. Bronum. Or D, siphonophores. The answer is C, Thronum. From what the fuck is this? Alien invertebrates. I have really nothing else to say about this one. That's just what they do. Number two, approximately how many hermaphroditic invertebrate species have been described? A, 6,500. B, 65,000. C, 650,000. Or D, 6.5 million. The answer is B, 65,000, and 450 species of vertebrate fish. Okay, number three. Ratfish is an uncommon common name for what animals alive today? A, sharks. B, skates. C, rakes. Or D, chimeras. The answer is D, chimeras, which means there are ratfish, batfish, flatfish, Catfish, and as many of you pointed out, also dogfish, and so many others, but they don't rhyme with rats. All right, number four. What is the fun name of the gene responsible for limb development that is reduced or absent in the legs of developing snakes? A, putt-putt. B, pajama sand. C, sonic hedgehog. Or D, Sly Cooper. The answer is C, Sonic Hedgehog, the Sonic Hedgehog gene responsible for limb development. Putt-Putt, Pajama Sam, and Sly Cooper were all absolutely elite games when I was a kid. I actually recently played Putt-Putt Travels Through Time. Spent $4 so I could play it on my laptop. I would do it again. Number five, Pycnogonids, also known as sea spiders, are arthropods that live in all sorts of marine ecosystems, from coral reefs to the deep ocean. Where do they house their organs? A, in their head. B, in their legs. C, in their big, meaty claws. Or D, they don't have organs. The answer is B, in their legs, because they look like chopsticks that came together to form a sentient being. The only place to put them is in their legs. Number six, cheetahs are unfortunately known for their absolutely dog shit genetic diversity, caused by evolutionary events called genetic bottlenecks that left so few individuals, they had to resort to inbreeding to keep their species alive. How many genetic bottlenecks did the cheetahs go through that we know of? A, one, B, two, C, three, or D, four. The answer is B, too, that we know. And before moving on to the next question, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Scentbird. If you studied for this quiz by watching this video, you already know that Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service. They send you different fragrance samples every month so you can figure out what scents are right for you without having to commit to a full bottle. One thing you might've already noticed about me is I like to keep my style pretty consistent. Black shirt, big shirt, black clothes in general. And with fragrances, I tend to stick to the same scents as well, more fresh, earthy scents. Trying something new can be hard, especially with how expensive fragrances in particular can be, which is why Scentbird is so cool. They have tons of different scents to choose from, the unisex ones I'm more used to, also ones that I wouldn't usually gravitate towards. You get new ones to try every month for just 17 bucks that you pick out yourself, so no surprises. But it gives you the freedom to mess around, pick something out you normally wouldn't because why not? It's low risk. Last month I got one fragrance I was more used to and another that was a little bit out of my comfort zone and I ended up liking both. So this month I decided to get two fragrances that are out of my comfort zone because the samples are big. Let me show you. They give you a 30 day supply of each, so I still have plenty of last months to fall back on just in case. The first one I got is called Ocean Odyssey. These containers are super portable, which is really nice, and you use it like so. Twist. I did it the wrong way. Wait, and you use it like so. Mm. 
This one is very subtle and refreshing. You know those pictures of the pools in Greece with a big round thing, somebody swimming in it that looks like they've never had a single problem in their entire life? That's what this smells like. Yeah, I'm definitely adding this to the lineup. Because if you can't be them, you might as well smell like them. All right, let's start at the next one. This is Magnolia Infinita. Twist. Spray. Mm, very citrusy. This one will be good for when it's really hot. I'll be an oasis in a city of sweat and unpleasant conversation. If you want to try them out for yourself or maybe try something new, you can use my coupon code Lindsay Nicole for 55% off at Semper for your first month. Available in the USA and Canada. That comes out to just a little over $7 to try it out. Thank you Semper for sponsoring this video. Check out their products at the link in the description. All right, next question. Number seven. What animals are known for their bizarre mating ritual known as penis fencing? A. Flatworms. B. Palolo worms. C. Create a notice moths or D leopard slugs. The answer is A, flatworms. This was probably a trick question because we had a whole video about the freaky ways that animals mate. And this one was in a different one, the aliens. Number eight, this is the pick two. There are two correct choices. What are two major features of carcinization or carcinized animals? A, round carapace. B, elongated carapace. C, abdomen sticking out all over the place. And D, Abdomen folded underneath the carapace. The answers are A and D. Round carapace and abdomen folded underneath the carapace. And on the same note, number nine, true or false, decarcinization is a real thing. The answer is true. Decarcinization is a real thing. What's the name of that fucking crab that's going through it? I can't remember. We talked about it. Gio, put it here. No, I don't think I will. Number 10. What are colonial animals? A. Small individuals called zooids attached to the same body. B. Animals that transitioned from water to land. C. Animals that migrate to a new location. Or D. Male and female sex cells that combine externally in the water column rather than internally. The answer is A. Small individuals called zooids that live on the same body. Like coral, bryozoans, the Portuguese man of war, salps, siphonophores, and so many others. Number 11. Many cephalopods have chromatophores. What are chromatophores? A. Color changing cells. B. Light reflecting cells. C. Melanin containing cells. Or D. Chrome colored cells. The answer is A, color changing cells. Pretty straightforward. Number 12, what are placoid scales made of? I have a hint, skin teeth. A, cartilage and dentine. B, cartilage and enamel. C, enamel and dentine. Or D, cartilage, enamel, and dentine. The answer is C, enamel and dentine. Skin teeth all over chondrichthyan bodies, so scales essentially. Number 13 is a matching game. Match the animal to their print. Which one is a cheetah and which one is a leopard? The answer is leopard on the left and cheetah on the right. Leopards have hollow rosettes, like spots that are hollowed out. It's called a rosette. And cheetahs just have straight spots. Number 14. Some animals have coloration known as aposematism. What is this? A. Camouflage. B. Coloration that tells the world this creature is toxic, disgusting, or just not worth it. C. Coloration that emerges when an animal is ready to mate. Or D. Coloration that makes it difficult for other animals to see at night. The answer is B. Coloration that tells the world the animal is toxic, disgusting, or just not worth it. Number 15. True or false? Scorpions are bugs. The answer is false. They are arachnids, not true. Bugs, which belong within the class Insecta. Number 16 is going to give you standardized test PTSD. Sorry. Fur is to mammals as blank is to pterosaurs. A. Sclerotic rings. B. Pycnofibers. C. Feathers, or D, placoid scales. The answer is B, pycnofibers, pterosaur fluff fuzz. It seems as though all pterosaurs have. Number 17, chondrichthyan fish are named such because they have A, cartilaginous skeletons, B, gills, C, buzzsaw jaws, or D, objectively large teeth. The answer is A. Cartilaginous skeletons. Chondrichthyan fish have cartilaginous skeletons. Shark skates, rays, sawfish, and chimeras. All right, number 18 is a speed ramp. I'm going to put five crabs on the board. You'll have 10 seconds to decide which ones are true crabs and which ones are false crabs. Ready? King crab, blue crab, Japanese spider crab, dungeness crab, and porcelain crab.
The true craps are the blue crap, dungeness crap, and Japanese fighter crap. The false craps are the porcelain crap and the king crap based on phylogenetic relationships. Number 19. Intestinal myiasis occurs when the larva of a certain animal group gets ingested and makes it through the gastrointestinal tract. What is an example of such animal group? A. Tube effects wart. B. Horsehair wart. C. Rat tail maggots. Or D. Proto. The answer is C, rat-tailed maggots. Number 20. Based on the fossil record and anatomical evidence in living snakes, how did snakes lose their legs? What was the progression? A, front limbs lost, then hind limbs lost. B, hind limbs lost, then front limbs lost. C, all of them reduced and lost at once. Or D, port side lost and starboard side lost. The answer is A, front limbs, then hind limbs. There are plenty of transitional species that only had hind limbs, and we can see tiny little vestigial hind limbs developed in the internal body of boas and, is it pythons? Boas and something, I can't remember right now, sorry. Number 21, Brianna noticed Genghis, the Baphomet moth, has gone viral due to the unsightly appearance of these inflatable organs that play a role in their reproduction. What are they called? A, Clitellum, B, Coromata, C, Chondric Beats, or D, Cacao. The answer is B, Coromata, or hair pencils. They pump out pheromones, like four bottles of Sauvage. Number 22, horsehair worms are parasites to what animals? A, insects, B, cephalopods, C, mammals, or D, reptiles. The answer is A, insects, thank God. Number 23, Titanobo was the largest snake to ever exist that we know. Of. Well, there are many factors that contributed to their large size. We went over one key one in particular. What was it? A, decreased temperatures. B, increased humidity. The air was thick, like an amphibious environment. C, the supercontinent Pangaea made everything a lot of the time bigger. Or D, increased temperatures. The answer is A, increased temperatures. Titanoboa was alive about 60 million years ago, but after the extinction of the dinosaurs, and their climate was generally just hotter, which allowed them to get bigger as ectotherms because they depend on the external environment for their body heat. So with the way their metabolism works, the higher the temperature, generally the bigger sizes they can get to. We can see this with snakes alive today. Bigger species tend to be near the equator, but does that mean that snakes in the future will be bigger? Probably not because other factors play into it as well. Number 24, why is big bug pushing bugs as an alternative food source? A, good source of protein. B, sustainable. C, they can be baked and cooked into dishes in a variety of ways. Or D, all of the above. The answer is D, all of the above. I'm not telling you to do that though, just saying. Number 25, tube effects worms have gone viral on the internet multiple times in the form of a pulsating mass where they're all clinging to each other. Why do tube effects worms cling to each other? A, lack of sediment to cling onto. B, lack of oxygen in their environment. C, lack of grass. Or D, lack of host to parasitize. The answer is A, lack of sediment to cling on to. They love sludge and filth and swan and sediment. When they don't have it, they cling to each other. Number 26, Sicilian pygmy elephants were descendants of the straight tusked elephant that got isolated on the island of Sicily and shrunk down to 15% of their original size. How did they get to Sicily in the first place? A, they swam there. B, a temporary land bridge let them migrate there and when it disappeared, they got stuck. C, a tsunami swept them from Italy to Sicily and they couldn't swim back. Or D, broadcast spawning. The answer is B, a temporary land bridge let them migrate there during the ice age when sea levels were lower and it disappeared when they got stuck because sea levels got higher due to the shifting climate. Number 27, true or false, pterosaurs were dinosaurs. The answer is false. Pterosaurs were not dinosaurs. They were relative, but not dinosaurs, as they're often depicted. Just a different flying reptile. Number 28. After decades of speculation, Helicoprion's tooth whorl and the surrounding cartilage were analyzed with CT scans. And scientists were finally able to place the spiral in the A. Dorsal fit. B. Tail. C. Upper jaw. Or D. Lower jaw. The answer is D, lower jaw. Makes sense. Number 29, the process of releasing eggs and sperm into the water column, allowing fertilization to occur externally, is called what? A, Lola. B, broadcast spawning. C, lunar periodicity. Or D, asbestos.
The answer is B, broadcast spawning. Lots of animals in the ocean do it. And number 30, in order to undergo carcinization, you must be A, A, cetacean, B, cretacean, C, croatian, or D, crustacean. The answer is D. In order to undergo carcinization, you must be a crustacean. All right, that's it. If you've been keeping track of your scores, please let me know what you got in the comments. Regardless of how you did, you get an E for effort. And a big thanks for participating in the quiz. I'm really excited for the next video that will hopefully be out next Friday, but might possibly take a little bit longer because it's a big topic with some pretty outrageous claims. Luckily though, for the very first time on this channel, I'll be talking to an expert to get their expert opinion on the map. I'm trying not to give the video topic away. It's gonna be the same setup as usual. I'm just gonna be doing a casual interview over coffee on the side with her behind the scenes, incorporating her knowledge into the video, letting you know what she told me as an expert. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. I'm also gonna be posting some updates on Patreon if you wanna see some more behind the scenes stuff. That's available in the lovely Telescope Fish tier. Thank you Semper for sponsoring this video. You can use my coupon code Lindsay Nicole for 55% off at Semper for your first month, available in the USA and Canada. And you can keep up with my short forum content on TikTok and Instagram. And for now, stay curious. The world has a lot for us to learn. See ya.